the Hadoop is, is very interesting. I'm not sure if all of our viewers are familiar with it. I know that this is, uh, Hadoop is an outcome of a lot of the research and work that Google has done. And Absolutely. Very yeah. large scale databases. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and if I have this correct, I understand that IBM is the only uh, company that actually has a supported version, if you will, of this that's out there. So yes, uh, Hadoop is part of the Apache Foundation, so it's an open source project, and Apache does have a supportive distribution of, of Hadoop, but it's, it's open source supported, right? Um, so what IBM did is we took our own cut of the, of the uh, Hadoop distribution, we created our own distribution that we support, and we help co companies to get up and running with it. Um, so that's part of what big, is inside of Big Insights, is a supported distribution of uh, Hadoop uh, distributed file system and um, the, um, uh, you know, MapReduce, which is the, the uh, programming language inside of it, essentially. Yeah. Um, and so that we have now provided as a, as a way for larger enterprises to get up and running on the software without having to take the risk of dealing with an open source software. And we provide engineering resources that we can you know, uh, bring to bear with, for the customer to allow them to have some support and some guidance in how they move forward with this. Right. And then on top of that, we're building additional capabilities. We have something called Big Sheets, which is a visualization tool that's much like a, a spreadsheet um, to be able to slice and dice and, and massage the information, just like you were using a spreadsheet, but you're working against to potentially petabytes of information wow. spread across distributed file systems. So uh, all of those are, are capabilities we provide on top of, of Hadoop uh, in, our, in our distribution of that. The second piece um, on the streaming side is we have a product called Infosphere Streams that came out of our research department. Uh, and this is something that really is focused on that streaming information, whether it's um, things coming off of those sensors we were talking about, you know, information streams, could be even video coming off of. We have implementations where we're looking at video streams of, of, of um, traffic monitoring systems spread across cities and um, looking at those streams of data and applying analytics in real time against that. And our Infosphere stream pro, uh, Streams products are able, able to handle petabytes of information per second, doing streaming analytics against that, um, literally you know, microsecond, sub-microsecond response times, wow. being able to find patterns in that information, that's even doing pre predictive analytics against it. And again, mostly to feed that information that's the interesting stuff right. into... The distillate, right? Yeah, yeah the distillate, exactly, into a warehouse house or to uh, send an event out. Let's say something happens in some traffic uh, um, you know, intersection somewhere and looks like there might be an accident. Well, I want to alert somebody that that's happened and maybe I want to reroute how the uh, traffic system works and so that the lights will redirect people or slow people down so that there's not an issue with that. And th those types of things are what we can do with streams. And I understand that massive amounts of data are really the key to uh, yes. getting to the root of these things. Yeah, you're just dealing with such huge volumes of information. In fact, uh, this week at the uh, keynote was the first time I saw the term zettabyte yeah. On, a, on a slide, <laughs> so, as opposed to hearing it. Yes, so I was pretty impressed. Yeah, you know, I had never, I didn't know quite how to spell it actually <laughs> before we started talking about big data. So yeah, zettabytes are are the new thing, and actually, um, there's one beyond that too that we've started to talk about too. So zettabytes are um, most companies are far away from zettabytes. Thankfully, but I tell you, you know, the the rate that information is doubling. Right. Everybody's going to be dealing with petabytes, where today they're in terabytes. Exactly. And I think you know fairly quickly beyond that, there there will be some. Uh, Zettabyte uh, level uh, implementations. Indeed, out there, so. and everything is getting sensors these days. Yeah. Uh, all these smartphones yes. are essentially uh, sensors just waiting to be used. Yeah, exactly. You sensors just, for everything, right? You can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, millions and millions of people reporting on temperature all around oh, yeah. the world. On Absolutely. Their, yeah. It's just remarkable. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think the big challenge is for people who really would like to sort of dip their big toe in? I know large enterprises have been doing analytics for a long time. Yes. It's not a new business, it's not a new practice. Mm -hmm. uh, but for smaller companies, even medium-sized companies, they may not have really gone into it in a big way, in a strategic way. Yep. What would you suggest to them as a way to move forward? Well, it's interesting you, you mentioned that because I, you know, one of the things we found is mid-sized companies, especially and the, the small companies, maybe not so, not as much, but mid-sized companies that are that are in competitive markets, we found that analytics is a way that they can really differentiate themselves. Really? So, you know, it is even though you kind of think of it as a big company investment, it actually is extremely effective for the mid-sized companies as a way for them to be able to differentiate what they do. Right? It, the better they use information, the more they're going to look different than their peers, and they start to look bigger. Or, yeah, they look bigger, and they can better, actually right. compete even with much bigger companies. Right. Um, now, that said, it, it's a challenge to get started. 
so typically what we, you know, what we, how we help companies get started is we, we do focus on trusted information. We, we focus on establishing a foundation of trusted information. We, of course, have our InfoSphere platform for helping companies to understand what they have in their, in their source systems, um, begin to uh, integrate it together, apply data quality to it. And, and of course, data integration is still non-trivial. I mean, it's yes, still, no, no, it's a, it's still a, lot a of work, fairly right? big project. But we do that through the lens of what I was talking about at the beginning, which of aligning the information to the business. Ah, okay. right? And so part of the exercise that we help companies to go through is to say, okay, what are you trying to achieve? Right? What are the key metrics, the key performance indicators, the key measures that you want to use to to uh, up, um, you know, differentiate yourself or the things you want to analyze, whatever it happens to be. And we focus on those as the outcome. And we tie those then to a view of, okay, where do I find that information and how do I get that information to a state where I can actually deliver on that metric? So by choosing and being very selective as to what metrics I want to focus on and um, how I'm going to exactly attack that problem by looking at what I have in my source systems, you can be extremely focused and deliver value very quickly. And it, of course, it's still difficult, and of course, there's still challenges. But it, we've seen that you can deliver a much faster return on your investment because you're now focused on what does the business want, what do I have to, to deliver against that, and how do I do it very quickly? Could could you give an illustration, for example, of mm -hmm. someone you've worked with who's actually going oh, yeah. through that process? Yeah. So I mean, I can give you an example of an insurance company that that I'm working with right now, actually, <clears throat> that's looking at. Um, how do I improve my agent effectiveness? So they're in uh, um, property and casualty insurance, and they yeah. have agents, you know, which are pretty much um, free agents, right? They do, they can go out and, if they want to, they could go to a different insurance company and, and sell their product. So these are independent agents. Independent agents, yes. yeah. And so, um, you know, their, their whole model is they want to attract these agents at a very rapid pace, and they want to make them as good as they can possibly be. Um, but understanding how good an agent is is very difficult. And then helping the agent themselves to optimize what they do is extremely right. important. Because so, they're not employees either. That's so they right. have a certain amount of control, but not... That's over. right, exactly. So how do I give them enough information that they're effective without giving them too much information? <laughs> Um, and so they're really focused on uh, several key metrics, and they've picked out um, you know, a set of agent analytics, um, that you know, agent me measures essentially, that measure the effectiveness of their agents so that they can begin to tier them. And they can then offer a different level, differentiated level of service to their agents, depending on whether they're a bronze, silver, gold, platinum right. type of agent. And they can spend more time helping the ones that are doing well as silvers that want to go to gold, um, and you know, make sure that the platinums have everything they need, and that they're happy, right? Right. And you know, just know how to differentiate how they're working with their agents. At the same time, they want the agents to be empowered, so they're working on a, another set of metrics for the agents to use to know how effective their um, marketing campaigns are to their to the uh, customer, ultimate customer, and then um, places where they can cross sell more effectively. So a lot of cross sell metrics around, you know, what what. Parts. Of what products in the portfolio does this customer already own? This is largely in the um, business-to-business -business sector, right? Right, right? So commercial insurance policies, uh, and where can I? Where do I have other opportunities to upsell those those commercial entities with additional policies or different types of, uh, of products, with financial products or other things like that in their portfolio? How do they measure their? Uh, let's say the effect of this of this program, this analytics applied. When you have that discrete of a target, I mean, I need to get these metrics delivered. Right, and uh, I know exactly what they are. It, it becomes a very easy zero. You know, it's a black or white issue. I either delivered those or I didn't. Uh, now, this company is actually also looking at the quality, and they're, they're very focused on the information quality that they deliver through those metrics. So they've actually got a program in place using our latest information server technology that allows them to see when they look at the metric, what's the quality of the information being delivered based on their quality. Uh, they have a set of uh, quality rules that they've put in place, the quality standards that they've set in place for how good is the information that I'm using. And those then are delivered as part of that metric. So not only do I know that this is the, the business metric that I'm, deliver, that I'm delivering, but I actually have quality metrics about how good that information is. And so that's helping them as well to evaluate how well they're doing because that quality has to be at a certain level. Is it fair to ask how, how it's worked out? They're still in progress, obviously. I, I think so far what they've delivered to the agents, the first, the first focus was actually on the agents themselves and delivering stuff because that, they get the most value out of effective agents. Um, what they've delivered to the agents has been very well received. They've been able to, um, they actually have a web portal that they deliver information out to the agents, and um, they've seen a huge increase in the agent effectiveness. Um, you know, part of the agent's issue is always dealing with the parent company. Right. 
you know, how do I get information out of these people? How do I self-service? Because I can't sit on the phone with somebody for two hours. I can't wait for somebody to call so me So in back. some cases, some of this information implies they need to change some of their internal processes Oh, absolutely. As well. Yeah, and they know that. This is a big change. This isn't all about this. There's yeah. always organizational change that goes along with it. And they've been... They've uh, been on this for, for a that. long time. Okay, yes. okay. This is not, you know, this is one step <laughs> in a big journey. Um, but the good news is that they've been able to establish a much stronger um, set of metrics for their, their agents, and they have the ability now to deliver um, the information to the agent in a self-service way, which has made their agents' uh, retention much ha uh, higher. They've been able to get much more of the um, tiering of agents to get up to higher levels, so they're actually delivering more, um, you know, more revenue for the, the um, insurance company. So it has been very good so far. Now they are just getting started. There's a lot of uh, longer-term goals that they have, but um, so far, you know, in about a nine-month period, they've been able to deliver value, the value to business. Well, that's very good. Yeah. I mean, even in the, even in the old days, a year uh, to see payback was considered. Yeah, reasonable. absolutely. So I mean, they're they're very happy. Um, now they've got a much bigger appetite, <laughs> so yeah. we'll see how the next ones go. But so far, they've done the right thing. They've focused. They've gotten the the key metrics defined. They aligned it to the business. They knew that if they delivered these metrics, they'd see the results, and then they're able to actually measure the results at the end and so. Do you find companies are prepared, sort of emotionally, if a corporation could be such, uh, to deal with the surprises that uh, get yeah, uncovered? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, there have been some surprises. There's there's actually two sets of surprises. The the first surprise that we usually get is how bad the quality of the information is, right. that's shocking to most. In fact, this insurance company no found... No one in IT is surprised. Yeah, well, nobody in IT in the business can't right. believe it, right? So um, what this insurance company I was um, referring to actually found that 30% of their customers had uh, multiple social security numbers associated with it. And it was incredible. You know, that's a very high percentage even, you know. And so they were shocked and dismayed. And, you know, shocked. there's all kinds right. of uh, ripples and ramifications. Of, but it was good because that was part of the value that was perceived out of what IT had delivered. Right, right. right. Um, the, the bigger shocks, though, are the business shocks. And those are the ones where, um, you know, an analytic, you run an analytic model expecting a certain result of, you know, um, the effectiveness of my, of my uh, agents. You know, I, I think that my golds are better than my silvers. And you find out that in some ways, silvers are better than golds. Well, wait a second, what happened? Right. You know? And so there were some of those surprises. Um, in terms of certain levels of effectiveness, they found that you know, the guys that they didn't think were as good were better at selling new products oh, than the guys that had been in the, in the, um, in the, the uh, gold category for a long time. So if they had been there for a long time selling a certain core set of products, they ended up being really good at selling those core sets of products. New products, not so good at it, and they didn't really care because they were so good at the core. These would seem to be the diamonds if right, you know exactly. how to use them. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, you know, and so it helps them to now, okay, this is how we focus, how we enable, this is how we focus, how we incent. Um, so it really did help them. Um, to to focus their energy and th those types of surprises are good surprises, indeed, right? Indeed. Even if they're not exactly what you expect. Well, right? you know, if, if you're open-minded, though, the, these are the, the probably the most important things they can learn. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Michael, I want to thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us and uh, sharing your insights and experiences. Well, thank Great. you for having me. It Fantastic. was my pleasure. Thanks, Michael. Take care.